Well, hi there. It's good to be back together. Uh, here we are, several days past uh, Tropical Storm Isaiah, and it allowed me the time to put together some notes that I would love to share with everybody who's listening. And it has to do with We've received quite a few emails, and now that we're, we're leaving the what I call already the mundane about the virus and the this and the masks, and if people are still hung up on that, they're heading down a slippery slope and pretty soon are going to find themselves trapped too. Uh, enough is enough, and as we said, we're moving forward, and we've received a lot of emails uh, about... Gosh, folks really appreciate a different aspect and a different way of thinking and wondering why is everybody running around like crazy and, and you guys just, you know, well, you're more than well aware of what's going on, but it doesn't have the same effect. And I want to share with you some notes that I put together and I really hope you'll find them extremely valuable going forward. And... Anybody who's been with old Barry any length of time knows how consistently I'm reinforcing the importance of not only knowing the true definitions of words, but also where they came from, where they originated. As I gather up my notes here, I know it's going to be rather difficult for some watching this video to appreciate this right off the bat, but Hang in there. Give, give me a few minutes and see if I don't make sense here. Uh, make no mistake about it, some of the most advanced weapons that are being used against all of us today are, in fact, words. Here's a few examples on their wide-reaching destructive power. Follow along. My first point to consider is that words are metamorphic. When used as a weapon, words have the ability to bend and change. They transform their meanings, therefore, can set a predetermined pathway for almost any direction the wielder desires. Several times I've mentioned, in fact multiple times, about what a pandemic is and what an epidemic is and how they've confused them, causing much of today's fear. Much of our current chaos is a result of such detonated weapons. If you do not know where these words come from and what they actually mean, you're going to make poor decisions. While words may cut like a paper tiger from the physical aspect, however, when it comes to the psychological effects, words are some of the most caustic weapons ever created. They hide, twist, and deceive. But you'd be well served by understanding words are only the fuse that ignites the chaos. Using words as a weapon works rather effortlessly in today's high-tech world. In fact, it's because of that technology and who owns it that's made it easier than in any other time in history. Today, it's actually easier to fool billions of people than it is to convince them that they have been fooled. Those who know the true power that lies in vocabulary weaponry have been using this knowledge as an armament against us for how long have we been around this planet? For a long time. We've researched back to the Sumerian culture, which is roughly 6,000 years. Uh, that's when we truly see the biggest shift, and it has to also do with one or two words I'll be talking about on the next couple of segments. Let's move on. In order to really understand the ploys being used against us, the curious will have to invest a fair portion of their time and also get hold of a good Latin dictionary. There's no shortcutting this if the individual truly wants to be informed. Any less only makes them misinformed. My own personal hands-on experience has taught me it's far better for a person to remain clueless than it is for them to be clueless based on bad information. Being misinformed is far more dangerous than simply being uninformed. If you give me a few minutes, give me a chance to explain what I mean here. By one being uninformed, in other words, just does not know, no information at all. 
One basically doesn't know, and so the story ends, it terminates there. In other words, there is no story. By being misinformed, that same person is now able to spread propaganda, false facts, and bad information, which only serves to promote fear and chaos, which all add to its potency. In fact, it's what's fueling the mass confusion we're all currently facing. My point being, misinformation allows the host to distribute. All too often, what's being distributed is a never-ending array of negativity. Over time, this leaves the misinformed with a feeling of hopelessness. We all know what can follow. Is it any wonder why some areas of Western culture are now seeing up to a 600% increase in their incoming calls to their suicide hotlines? In my opinion and my thoughts, without question, one of the most important words for you to understand is the word belief. The word belief has been used as a weapon against the masses for many millennia, and make no mistake about it, is the root of much of humanity's present downfall. The word belief actually comes from two words, be and leaf. The first part, be, comes from being, which is being in a state of existence. To be is to actually be in a state of being. It's where you currently are in mind, body, or a combination of both. The second word is leaf. And that originates from the Indo-European word of loop, L-E-U-B-H, which translates in English to the word love. Using its true meaning and putting it to proper use changes the entire idea of the word belief. Belief means to be in love with whatever it is that you believe in. You love what you believe. However, it has nothing whatsoever to do with being truth or factual. By confusing the definition to mean truth, can you not see the divide that's taking place from that type of mindset? Can you not see the danger in doing this? The next word I want to bring up to your attention is one that's not often thought of as a weapon. Primarily because it camouflages itself as being on our side, perhaps even a friendly ally. The word I'm referring to is news. It's another scrambled word that somehow over the years has morphed into something that mirrors truth or at least something that should be taken as truth. This might come as a shock to some of you. However, during our decades-long endeavors, we've looked up several sources and simply cannot find the word truth or even the word certainty or surety in any of the definitions we've ever come up with. Take, for example, what follows. It originates from a well-known source, Merriam-Webster. The Webster's Dictionary definitions of the word truth are a report of recent events or previously unknown information or having something a spec uh, something having a specified influence or effect. Some other definitions we found from other sources include such terms as a matter that is newsworthy or a topic of public interest. Similar definitions found in every other resource we checked. To date, none of us have ever come up with a definition that contains the word truth, certainty, even surety. Can you not begin to see the hazards that would develop by confusing these type of words? It doesn't constitute truth, or for that matter, even accuracy. But if it's perceived in that fashion, could you not see the divide? Did you not see the split amongst the populace when that is being used as a weapon? 
For quite some time now, editors care little about what is the truth in anything that comes out for public viewing. Modern journalism consists largely of the following principles. A. It doesn't need to be true. B. It's okay if it causes irreparable damage to millions of lives. All that is important is you get it out to the public first. Writing in compliance with today's information highway, all that really matters is getting the story out first, period. The chief reason they're able to get away with this is today's fast-paced world has been conditioned. Its citizens only remember things for a very short period of time. What's news today is forgotten tomorrow. I want to bring up another little point here before continuing on. Um, here's another example of how they use the word news to keep the ignorant at bay by using it as a weapon. Here's a question for you. When's the last time you heard anything about the potential threats from the Middle East? Terrorism is a word I haven't been heard of in a while now. Are the militias now too busy hauling around that case of toilet paper in the forest like you see? Before lockdown, wasn't terrorism all the rage? Well, wasn't it? When's the last time you heard about any threat from the Middle East since the COVID? It's a good point you might want to continue. How they understand how they get your mind in one direction, Move it to another, move it to another, so quickly that you forget you're so confused you don't even know which way's up, most of the people. And it's all done by design. I, I think most of my listeners are, are, are wise enough to understand that. It's even why I shug off all the comments or whatever, as is, is a small percentage as they are, about, well, don't you care about all the people dying? When someone would make a comment so silly as that, when I'm donating my time trying to educate people because of what's happening, it shows you the devastating effects how words can be used as a weapon. This clever deception ensures that most remain ignorant of news being little more than a form of entertainment, and it's because of this that the highest percentage of what the public gathers is bad information. If the implication of the words been altered and the public naively accepts the new and program misuse of it, what else do you promote other than fear, confusion, and eventual chaos? Once again, the string puppet is controlled by an outside source. Remember this, news is information and a means of entertainment, period. It does not and never was meant to be a sole source of information gathering, and it is certainly no source of unveiling truth. I want to sidebar quickly uh, for a moment here, but uh, I'm so grateful because my father taught me a long time ago, if you don't gather your own facts and formulate a hypothesis, not an opinion, a hypothesis comes from study, You'll always be receiving whatever it is that others want you to know and promote for them. Research takes time. Research takes a lot of time. Opinions are formed in seconds. Most word traps are designed for brain lazy just in case if any of the viewers are interested, uh, while doing the initial research on the word news, uh, we also came up with several acronyms for what the meaning of the word stood for. One was news stood for National Early Warning System, and another stated it, st it stood for North, East, West, and South. But our research determined neither of these is correct, the word news is not an acronym. I don't feel I need to mention that true news is unbiased and should never be censored. When platforms such as YouTube, Google, or any other form of distribution begins censoring any material, the word definition then shifts from news and becomes what is known as propaganda. That's an important point to remember.
Before closing off, I want to bring up one more set of words uh, I want to briefly go into. And the first is ignorance. And the second is one not commonly used anymore, nescience. Nescience. Nescience comes from the Latin words ne and schiere. Ne means no, schiere means science. So that means there's no science or there's no information available about whatever it is that you're looking to find information about. Nescience, therefore, carries no blame attached to it. Okay? If the information is not available, there is no blame attached if you cannot find it. The other word I so often use is ignorance. Ignorance is not insulting anybody. That is how the word has been misused. It's another word trap. Look at the root of it. The root of ignorance is ignore. So space the syllables differently. You are ignorant, ignorant of available information. You choose to ignore it, whether by not showing an interest or being a little bit brain lazy or whatever the case may be. The important part I want to get across about these two words is ignorance carries blame with it. Absolutely. It's the biggest reason we're all suffering now. Nescience carries no blame with it because the information was never available. Please remember that, okay? When somebody's properly using the word and saying you are ignorant, they did not insult you. They did not call you stupid or dumb or anything that might go on in your mind. They said you are ignoring available information. I wanted to bring that last point up. So in closing, let me ask you guys watching this, do we have news or do we have propaganda right now? Belief in anything promotes fear. And that's why you'll always find it's the believers hiding behind the tallest walls and the thickest doors. Belief is the fuel that's driving a high percentage of today's misconceptions, fears, and anxieties. Stop believing. Start researching. The inner peace that comes from it might be the Eden we've all been looking for. I can honestly tell you, over the years for my family, it clearly was. And that goes back to why People always ask us, you guys don't seem stressed. Like, wow, you seem like laid back as an ironing board. The reason why is I've invested my time instead of wasting my time. Remember, time is a commodity. And the rewards I have and my family, it's guided us properly for what's coming up. And it provides inner peace. There is no fear of the abyss. We've taken the time to understand. I hope this video really helps people because somehow over the millennia, we have been taking it for granted that true, hard researched, accurate information is owed to us by simply putting a, uh, pushing a button and watching a screen. And that is just not the case. It's another hoodwink. So uh, again, I hope you guys get something out of it. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. It is my sincerest endeavor to stop fear and getting people to think clearly. One of the biggest reasons we've moved on while others are still reporting the same hoopla about what's going on and it's just old news already. If you don't know it by now, if the people you're trying to help don't know it by now, if the most informed with the YouTube channels and everything are doing it still, if they're still at that level of understanding, understand. They've already slipped off the highway and it only, how deep does the canyon go from there? Until next time, this is Barry NDR. We'll talk soon.